So the large intestine, remember, has a larger diameter, but it is actually smaller than the small intestine in its length. Our large intestine is connected to the ileum, which is the last part of the small intestine, and it is the ileocecal valve that uh, controls the movement of the food from the small intestine to the large intestine. When we look at the large intestine, we have a part of our large intestine that is called the cecum. The cecum is a blind ended pouch. So it is weird in that it is like this out pocketing of our large intestine, which doesn't really make sense because we want things to move through our digestive system. But this is important because this is what actually houses symbiotic bacteria. Now compared to herbivores, we omnivores, humans, we have a much smaller cecum. Some animals that are grazers and they eat plants, they have very large, like a rabbit would have a much larger cecum, right? Because it needs those bacteria to break down the cellulose. We have symbiotic bacteria that are actually important. One a strain of E. coli, so an E. coli strain produces vitamin K, which is actually necessary for blood clotting. Interestingly, when we are born, our digestive system does not have any bacteria in it. It's actually the act of, of moving through the birth canal and coming out and then interacting with our world that allows these bacteria to colonize our digestive tract. And so when you're born, you don't have these E. coli that produce vitamin K for you. And so oftentimes they give babies a shot of vitamin K. And the reason for this is, is that they're concerned that they might have to do some emergency surgery. And if they do that and there's no vitamin K present, the blood cannot clot. So they give newborn babies a shot of vitamin K for that. So this is actually kind of an acquisition of a trait, right? We have acquired the ability to produce vitamin K because we house this specific strain of E. coli in our large intestine. Now attached to the cecum is an interesting structure called the appendix it's generally considered to be part of the immune system. So it has an immune function. So it could help protect against bad bacteria that get stuck in the cecum, right? And it's kind of interesting because in the past they thought the appendix was like didn't have a function and they would actually remove it. That and the spleen, they tend to just, if you opened you up, they would just remove it. But they now realize the appendix does serve an immune function. However, it can also be infected. The appendicitis can, be in, can cause it to get big and it can rupture. And if your appendix ruptures, that is life-threatening because your whole body cavity, then your whole coelom, your body cavity, can be filled with bacteria and digestive stuff and it can kill you, right? You can, so you can get really sick and, and die from that, right? So it's very, very dangerous, but it tends to happen quite frequently um, uh, with people to have appendicitis and an appendix rupturing, okay? So that is the large intestine. So I wanted to look at the large intestine here. This is my appendix. We have an ascending colon, a transverse colon, and a descending colon. So it goes in a certain direction. This would be on, um, it is on the right side of the body. Yes. So it is on the right side of your body. If you turn around, 
remember these diagrams are backwards. So it's as if you're looking at a person. So this would be on the right, even though it's on the left side, this is the right part of your body. So you could trace it, goes up the right, over, and then down, right? Sometimes they recommend if you have babies with colic that you massage their large intestine to get rid of the gas that might be causing problems in their digestive system. Okay, another major function of the large intestine is um, the reabsorption of water. So, or just absorption of water. So function, big function, major function is the absorption of water. Diarrheal diseases, really bad diarrheal diseases can kill you very fast. Like if you have an infection in your large intestine, like uh, a bacterial infection like Clostrid Clostridium difficile, C. difficile, it is a bacterial infection that will give you bad diarrhea or um, cholera gives you bad diarrhea. And if you will just dehydrate, like you will just die of dehydration unless you are hooked up to IV fluids, right? But imagine if you, before antibiotics and before IV fluids, if you got this, you would probably just dehydrate and die. So this absorption of water is super important. Um, when we look at the large intestine, this is also where we have the formation of feces. So this is digestive waste. Digestive waste is brown because of the bile typically, and it also contains a lot of bacteria, a lot of bacteria in the feces. And then all the undigestible parts of our diet like fiber. We can't digest cellulose. And so the fiber that we take in just essentially moves through and helps keep things going through. We want things to move through our digestive tract relatively fast, right? be very efficient with our digestive system. So that would be the parts that um, we do not digest. And so that would come out of the anus. So that is the end, the very end of the digestive system.